There's two kinds of people in the world. The kind of person who looks at a $200-ish backpack just for your FPV gear and goes, yes, that makes a lot of sense. I want to protect my gear. I want it to be readily accessible. No normal backpack will do. Or are you a kind of person who says, $200, who could get away with charging that much for a freaking backpack? Whichever one of those people you are, today's video is for you, because this is HDLRC's entry into the $200-ish FPV backpack category, and we're gonna find out whether it is worth all that money and bring something really cool to the table, or whether it uh, is just another backpack and it's kinda overpriced. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. This style of backpack has a lot in common with photography bags. Bags that are designed to carry expensive camera equipment and to make it all easily accessible when you get wherever you're going. When we get somewhere, we put our bags down and we're constantly getting in and out the stuff that we need while we're flying. And then we pack it all up again, throw it on our back and go somewhere else. And that's what makes this style of backpack different from a more typical backpack and more expensive because this style of backpack is way more rigid than a typical backpack. It's got a lot of padding in the sides and a lot of structure. And what that means is that you can put all your stuff into the backpack without separate cases. There are some FPV backpacks by some manufacturers that are a little bit more like traditional soft-sided bags. And to me, they don't make a lot of sense because in order to throw your controller into that backpack, you're gonna want it to be protected by something else. Whereas the advantage of something like this is that you can put all your stuff in it and it is the protection, it is the case. Let's start here on the front of the backpack where we typically would strap quadcopters to the outside of the bag. Now, one of the things I'd like to know is how many quadcopters can I get on the outside of the bag? We've got three straps here and the way I would usually approach this style of thing is to put one quadcopter here uh, and I would strap it over the legs like so, so that uh, the quadcopter cannot fall down enough that the motors and props are banging on the ground. Uh, we could probably get a second one. This one doesn't have props on, so maybe it's a little bit cheating, but I would put that underneath like so and strap over the top. And then I would hopefully be able to get a third one. Here's my Rotoriot Skyliner. And I would kind of overlap that like so wish, I guess. Just however you can make it work. <laughs> and strap that down. And that's what the backpack is gonna look like with three quadcopters on it. Uh, pretty nice. The props aren't hanging out too much. Everything seems reasonably secure. And it's not messing with the internals of the backpack because of that rigid shell. I do have a little bit of quibble with the buckle here. The buckles are magnetic and you release them simply by pressing in on this piece here. You can see that if you just press the buckle, that's how it releases. And it doesn't take very much force to press it and cause it to come undone. I don't know, like, can I get it to release if I don't press right on that exact spot? Like, let's cinch it down good and snug uh, and push on it. I'm not pressing on that spot. Yep. It'll pop right off. So to me, this seems like it is a solution in search of a problem. Like the old buckles that just actually clasp together work fine. And now we've got this fancy magnetic one that's easy to remove, but the other one wasn't hard to remove. And it seems like there's potential for this to get knocked while you're walking around, because these things are freaking massive and occasionally you bump into things. It seems like there's a lot of potential for it to get knocked and let go, and then potentially your stuff all falls on the floor. Not a fan of that buckle. The next feature that I was gonna demonstrate to you is that this whole section can actually be unzipped and removed in case you don't want it. And uh, I mean, I guess I'd probably rather have it than nothing. I mean, if I don't have these straps, where am I gonna put my quadcopters on the outside? It would be pretty cool if HDLRC had an alternative method, for example, like stretchy bungee string uh, I've seen on some other backpacks, if they had some alternative piece you could buy and zip on here. This is a really clever way of doing this, but if there's nothing else that you can put on here, then your choice is either remove it and lose the storage or have it with questionable security. Here at the top of the bag, there is a separate compartment. Uh, this is most commonly used for your transmitter. Uh, it's got a little strap in here 
to strap it down. Of course, you could use it for anything you needed quick access to. And in addition to this section, there is also a little mini pouch here for smaller items, little antennas or whatever. Let's see how some transmitters fit in here. Here is my Radio Master Boxer, and it is a little bit wider, but not too wide, and seems to fit pretty well. And I like that there is room and the top to protect the switches. We can see that when this closes, there's a little bit of space there. If you really wanted to, you could put some foam on there, but you really shouldn't have to. If we switch over to the TX16S, which is an even larger radio, that definitely isn't gonna go in this way. The switches will get messed up and everything. Let's put that in and it's a little wider, but still fits pretty well and plenty of room here in the top and plenty of room here. It seems like you're wasting space but with something like a controller that has switches and stuff that can break, you really want that space as protection against uh, something getting damaged. In addition, having it at the top of the bag means that when you put the bag down, you're not setting it down on the transmitter and you can easily and quickly get the transmitter out when you get wherever you're going. Continuing around the outside of the bag, we've got these side pouches. There is a little flippy floppy thing here and uh, a zipper pouch, nothing inside there, just go down in through the top and put whatever you like. Uh, I'm not sure what I would trust not to fall out of this. It's kind of loose and uh, I think mainly what it would be useful for is if you had something like a tripod that you wanted to put in and then strap down with this side strap, it would sort of hold it in place. Um, same thing on the other side exactly the same thing on the other side. There's a card holder on this side uh, and a Velcro patch holder on this side. Moving around to the back of the bag, there is a side opening laptop pouch here. It is padded on both the back side and obviously on this side, the interior side. I, my gut feeling is you could squeeze a 17 inch laptop in here if you really wanted to. 15 inch is gonna be no problem. I don't have a 17 inch laptop to try it on, so you're gonna have to just go with my gut or guess. HCLRC has put a lot of work into the straps of the back to pack, and that's a pretty big deal because once it gets weighed down with a bunch of stuff, it's really gonna matter how it fits on your back. Uh, it is well padded, first of all. We've got a lot of padding on this side here. Uh, there are these cross straps, which, to tell you the truth, I'm not 100% sure what that's for. Maybe to help sort of keep this air channel here open so you have a little bit of breathability and so, you, know, you get all that back sweat off of you. The shoulder straps join to the bag here at the top, but there is another set of clasps of buckles here that we could take this out and move that down. And that's gonna change the way that it rides on your back and change the way that it carries the weight. It is, that's fascinating. There's this Velcro, oh, that's some honking Velcro, It'll come out, comes out there, that's gonna come down and these straps are gonna come out and go there and then it's gonna attach here rather than up here. I could see some advantages to that. It does seem like it's gonna be like sturdier if you move these straps down. I can't say for sure, but like this is sort of the main back frame of the backpack and this is the controller pouch, which is just a little flimsier. So with the backpack set up the way they shipped it to me, as this pulls down, you see that it's gonna compress. Oh, what's this down here? Oh, look at this. So on the bottom, we have, uh, this is a strap here. This is where you'd put your tripod or any other kind of long thing. Uh, that's pretty good. I can't help but notice that this buckle doesn't really hold when pulled on. That's not that useful, unfortunate. You really need it to cinch down and stay in place. And then we come to the inside of the bag. Now, one of the biggest decisions you can make when thinking about which bag to get is whether the bag opens in the front or opens in the back. And at first I thought this question was obvious. Obviously you want it to open in the front. So you got your quadcopters right here. You set it down, you open it, you flip it over. You got all your stuff. And then if you need to get out one of your quadcopters, you can flip it back over and you get this all good to go. But someone else 
argued. I don't want to put this part, my shoulder straps, this is the part that's going to be touching my back. I don't want this stuff all weighing in the dirt and getting dirty. I'd rather set it down on my quadcopters and unzip it from the back. And there are backpacks out there that do that. I personally am still an open from the front guy, but if you are an open from the back guy, then this is not the backpack for you. The Pyrodrome backpack is one that opens from the back and maybe is more your speed. And on the inside, there are the expected number of dividers. Uh, the dividers can be arranged however you like. Of course, they are Velcro, uh, and you can sort of shuffle that around. And one of the most fun things you can do when you get a new backpack like this is shuffle them around and put all your little parts in there. Goggles go here, you know, what goes here, what goes there and make it how you want it. I will say that these shelves are pretty thin compared to the shelves or dividers from some other bags I've seen. The Pyrodrome bag specifically has really thick dividers, very stiff. The iFlight bag that I use as my daily driver is sort of in between, and that's gonna matter because as, especially as they get older, they're gonna wear out and get a little saggier. On some bags, these shelves will have separate little pouches little zipper pouches or flex pouches. That is not the case on any of these. These are just dividers and there are no additional sort of organizing compartments inside the backpack. Here on the inside of the front shell, we've got flexible mesh compartments here and a zipper compartment here. The mesh compartments are divided into two segments and you can see everything that's in there. Uh, it's hard to think what you would put in, in this one. I don't know, maybe props. Maybe you could slide a bunch of props in there and that would help keep them from, uh, from like, poking things and it'd be easy to get at them. Um, but uh, that is what you got on the inside. Let's try it on. Oh, you got a handle here. That's nice. Easy to pick it up. Oh, see, that doesn't ride too high, does it? I really think they should deliver it with the straps like on the bottom section. That makes a lot of sense to me. If you've watched this far into the video and you are loving this backpack, then I want you to know there are links down in the video description where you can purchase it. And those links are affiliate links. And what that means is that when you make any purchase at the affiliated store, whether you're buying this backpack or just buying a set of props, whatever you buy, go find one of my affiliate links, click the link, and uh, I get a little commission. Doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just an easy, easy way for you to support the channel. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you my opinion of this backpack and I'm gonna give you two other backpacks that I think you should look at. So if you love this backpack, maybe you don't wanna watch this next part. I think that this backpack is a good try in the $200 premium backpack range but it gets a lot of the cosmetic stuff right, but it misses a few steps that, that for me at least would make other backpacks preferable. And the steps that it misses are the aforementioned buckles. The fact that it delivers the back strap uh, attached to the top here, I think is, I don't like it that way. I think it's a mistake, but that's easy to fix by moving the straps down. So we'll let that slide. Uh, and the interior dividers seem a little bit flimsier. And I know from experience that this is the best they'll ever be. And then they sag and get weaker as the backpack gets one or two years old. Um, so I think that I would like them to be a little bit more stiffer and more rigid. And I would love for them to have some internal organization, like little pouches or whatever on the sides of the dividers, like many other backpacks do. So for me, this backpack would be a pass. And the two backpacks that I would have you look at if you're thinking about getting this one are the iFlight backpack, which is my daily driver, and the A-Liner all-line backpack, which was almost my daily driver, but there were a couple little things about it I liked better about the iFlight bag that steered me that direction. I'm gonna put cards on screen to both of those reviews, and I suggest you check them out before you make a final buying decision. I'll also put links to those videos down in the video description if for some reason you can't see the cards. I'll see you there.